And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. He went to lie down at the end of heap of corn. Well, hold on a second. We never caught that last time, right? We might have read it before, but everybody knows that there wasn't corn back then. Okay? So if we go to Ruth, actually, we can go to Ruth chapter 3. And then I'm going to show you this. You see, with a heap of corn. Okay? It means a sheaf. A sheaf, that also means a pile, to pile up. But is it really quote-unquote corn? No, what you're going to see is that corn doesn't mean corn. They could tell you, I mean, you'll find studies that say it means grains, right? Any grain that's standing up. But it's not true. In all of the cases when you see this in relation to corn, you're going to see the actual definition of it. Check this out. Okay, here's that heap or heap of corn or sheaves. Look at where we find one of them. Let's go to Song of Songs. Okay, Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 3. Let's go it in our trusted e sword. 7, verse 3. Listen to this. Uh, actually, in verse 2. Thy navel is like a round goblet, which wanteth no liquor. Thy belly is like an heap. There it is, okay? Like a heap of wheat. Like a heap of wheat. Okay? Like a stalk of wheat. There we're seeing this wheat connection to corn. Well, there's even more. Check this one out. We don't need to go there for this one. Watch this one. You guys probably know this one well, right? In um, John chapter 12. In fact, in John chapter 12, we covered this not too long ago. And what this is about is right here in chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. What is this corn of wheat? Okay, let's go into John chapter 12. We know that John chapter 12 relates to the time of seals, right? This portion of around middish seals. See, and if a corn of wheat, there it is right there. And if a corn of wheat, okay? There's the kernel, a seed of grain. There it is again to tell us that it's corn wheat right there, okay? What do we know about, <clears throat> excuse me, this wheat? Well, we know that relates to those who are putting their necks on the line during seals, right? So isn't it fitting that those who have the light of Christ are putting their necks on the line as Christ did, right? As John did, and they're working during the time of seals to bring in what? The great multitude of the wheat harvest. You see? So that would explain this wheat first fruits, wheat workers. You see, in the past, when I would break this down, it would appear <coughs> like, like the, the, the first fruits. And this is where it was kind of a head scratcher before, because if everybody going pre-trib is, is the pre-trib of wheat, how, how is it distinguished that portion that comes out of the wheat? Okay, that, that remains to work. So we're starting to see some understanding in relation to the the barley piece coming first but that barley piece is the time is running short right it's getting really tight so is it still possible though that they can be wheat and that the pre-trib is all wheat and a group is taken from them yes that is very possible and you'll see that even in things like um is it in this one yeah so when it comes to the levites Remember, the Levites don't inherit any of the land, okay? They don't get the land. They're, they belong to the Lord, right? He is theirs. And so in Numbers 18, 26 and 27, it says, Thus speak unto the Levites and say unto them, When you take of the children of Israel the tithe, the tithe which I have given you 
from them for your inheritance, then shall you offer up and heave offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. You see, so from of those that could be the pre-trib of the week, a portion of them is to remain as that workers of seals, as that first fruits of that wheat harvest. Okay, now you, now you can see that. That's why when we looked at this in relation to, to Loafmas Day, right, which is when they bring in uh, the loaves of bread as the first fruits of the wheat harvest, it's between uh, August 1st or it said shortly before. So here we are at this connection that would bring in the loaves of bread, which means the pre-trib escape happens. These guys then are the first fruits and the Lord, when he returns on the eighth day, we know when he returns on the eighth day, he meets with them, they follow him and so on and so forth. We know the story. Those are the actual workers. Those are the, the ones putting their necks on the line. They are truly the first fruits of the first fruits of the wheat harvest. But as you just saw, as you just saw in Numbers 18, we can see that the first fruits, the 10% tenth, tenth that is going into them, from that, there's another portion of it that is theirs. And listen to what it says in verse 27. So uh, this is Numbers 18, verse 27. And this, your heave offering, shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn of the threshing floor and the fullness of the wine press. Well, isn't that interesting? Because we know there are two worker groups during the time of seals and then trumpets. One is wheat and the other one is grapes. One are the seals workers, the other one are the trumpets workers. One is wheat, one is grapes. Okay, let's look at it in Esword, Numbers 18, 27. Okay, here it is right here. And this your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn. Ah, oh, look at that. That is grain, corn, flour. Ah, wheat. You see, so what we're noticing with the word corn is that no point within corn is it telling us barley. It's telling you wheat, 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 wheat. And in some places where it says corn, it just means standing grain, the grain that's standing tall. Well, if every other piece is telling you that corn is wheat, why would we suddenly turn to think that it means barley? Okay? 